Hello everyone, my name is Dominika Lasota. I'm a 20-year-old activist from Poland. And it's a big honor, it's a big privilege for me to be able to address you today. I regret not being able to do it in person in, in Yerevan, but the movement here in, in Poland and the communities that I'm part of really needed my help at the moment and my support. And so I, I couldn't join you all the way in Armenia, although I'm sure it would be a very, very, very lovely meeting. Since 24th of February this year, when the first bomb started falling on Kiev, me and my friends, we started organizing and fighting and doing all that we could to stop the flow of the money for the Russian fossil fuels, to stop the financing of the war machine that is right now taking our neighbors, our friends in Ukraine, taking their lives away from them. We've been spending months and months traveling across Europe, building movements, mobilizing thousands and thousands and thousands of people and speaking very directly to politicians, saying to them that our reliance, our dependency on fossil fuels must stop because it takes the many worlds away from us and it drives the crises that all of us are affected by right now, be that the climate crisis, be that the energy crisis, or be that the war that is happening literally next to our doors. But I wanted to start today with a little appeal to you, with a little, with a little ask, that I do not want to be your inspiration. So often, we as, as activists, as, as young people, are hearing this, this, this phrase that you know, you're so inspirational, uh, you're bringing me hope. But then what's happening is that we hear all of those words, we see all of those smiles, we hear all of those applauses, but then we're left alone with the weight of the world that at the moment is truly crushing. And so today, please don't make me an inspiration to you. Hear me out. Because what I want to do is I want to really make you understand why you have to join me. Why you have to be part of this struggle if you haven't been so far. Because the story of now is something that is truly tragic. We are battling with the effects of the climate crisis which recently has been taking millions of lives away in the global south, in countries like Pakistan, making it, making communities, making ecosystems disappear under destruction. All across Europe, we are battling with prices and with costs of living that have been truly unprecedented in the last years. And at the same time, just next to us, in Ukraine, we are seeing a war that a few months ago was unimaginable. Right now, it is a daily reality. It is a daily reality in 2022 that bombs are falling on Kharkiv, in Donetsk, and in many other cities in which people were just living their lives, wanting only safety and wanting to keep their worlds together, to thrive. Right now, all of the worlds in Ukraine, across Europe, in Africa, in Asia, in South America, and many, many more, the worlds are being put at war. At war of profits against people. Because all of those crises, they didn't fall from the sky. They didn't just magically appear and disrupted our lives. Those crises are an effect of the system that we're living in. And that system is based on fossil fuels. And that system is upheld by people in power who on a daily basis, as we speak, make decisions that support business as usual instead of supporting people's lives. They are making decisions that make the CEOs of fossil fuel companies happy, 
that make them reap record, record, record profits on those crises, but decisions that literally mean that my friend calls me early in the morning saying that we will call soon because he has to run to the basement because the bombs are falling on his city. That's the reality that we've been forced into. That's the story of now. And so you may ask, you know, I feel so desperate, hopeless hearing all of that. What to do? What should be our reaction? What should be our action in the face of destruction? And to me, even though I honestly have to say that I'm losing words and losing just ways of describing everything that's going on because it is so, so bad. I feel like the only thing that's left to us is a story. It's building an alternative story to the story of now. And so how should we do that? How should we build a different story? Well, I think in that you might be particularly good at. Because festivals are nothing more than just gatherings of people to create stories, to share stories, to exchange stories. And I feel like, you know, it's very telling that the humans are what distinguishes us from other species is the ability to build communities around stories, around ideas. And sometimes I feel like maybe all we should do is just to gather kind of like around the fireplace and tell to each other a different story for the current moment. To me, that story is first and foremost about listening and hearing the perspectives of people on the front lines of the crises. Because in Europe, for some reason, everything that we've been talking about, about you know, climate change is polar bears that are disappearing. And I love polar bears. And <laughs> this is not to tell you to disregard polar bears. But for decades, we have been deaf to the voices of people in the global south to whom climate crisis is not a future problem, but it is a daily reality. And the reality they've been forced into since decades. And so what we have to do first, before building any other story, is to hear the stories that we have been deaf to, that we have been ignoring. And so listen to those who are most affected by the current crises. Because they will tell you, they will tell you the stories of how oil companies enter towns in Uganda to build yet another disastrous pipeline. Because some people in some company in France or in Europe decided to just make more money, displacing hundreds of thousands of people from their houses, just like that. When you open yourself to those stories, you will hear recollections of people in Philippines who since decades are battling with hurricanes that are just erasing houses, ecosystems from, from, from earth, from, from the ground, while at the same time they have to face dictatorships that kill those who try to defend those pieces of land. And finally, if you open yourself up to those stories of people from Ukraine or Syria, you will hear recollections of invasion that they've been battling with, invasion that is fueled by fossil fuels and by politicians who prefer upholding the industries instead of upholding people's lives. So hear those stories first. And then build resistance and build a story of resistance. We have to do whatever is possible to secure the worlds that we are desperately losing. We just have to do that. Because even though you might not feel like your home, your life is at threat, we are all at threat. No one is safe. 
in the system that places profit over people. No one is safe. And I say it from the perspective of a Polish person. You know, I do not have a war in my country. But since years, I have an autocratic government in power that is taking the right for me to choose about my life, about my body. They chose it. They took it away from me. We have a government who right now, as my family, as many other families in Poland, are already worried about meeting the, making the ends meet. They are creating the club of millionaires. And so again, even now, even, even nationally, even locally, we have instances of people in power who are choosing profits, their profits over people. And so as long as this is the story that we live by, we are at threat. So build the story of resistance. Bring people together and be bold about hearing the stories that are yet untold or either ignored. And be bold to say no to business as usual. If any of you thought that you can keep going as usual, as normal, as if nothing is happening, and because someone else, you know, an inspirational activist will do the job for you, will save the world for you, then let me tell you that you are mistaken. And that is no longer the case. As people who care for the world, as people who are able to share ideas, and as people who, as you, know how to uplift ideas and spread them, spread the story of anti-fossil fuel resistance, of anti-war resistance, of anti-profit resistance, because that is the story of survival. And in times where the crises are taking lives away from people, there is just no other way than to do our best to resist and to survive and make as many of the micro worlds, as many of those precious stories, of this precious music, of those precious cultures, of those precious communities and ecosystems, of fighting as hard as we can to make them survive. So I hope you will not leave this room today feeling that you've heard a really nicely sounding speech and that you're hopeful about the world. Hope will not change the fact that somebody is in a bomb shelter now. Hope will do us nothing and will do nothing to communities who have to face the fossil fuel industry entering their homes, their towns and taking what's most valuable and precious to them. Hope will offer us nothing if it comes without action. So join me. Don't clap to me. Join me. Join us. There's many of us already, but not enough. Thank you.